Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. This one is one of the kick challenge tutorials, which means the Brigadiers voted for a theme and the winner was a kick for my birthday. I created them a mood board to work from, which honestly I could have just added pictures forever because I like a lot of stuff, but it's just a good mixture of 80s stuff, pizza, cups of tea, Disney, and all that jazz. Stick around to the end of the video to see everybody's entries and vote for your favorite in the comments below. Now let's crack on with the tutorial. I based my cake on an 80s synth wave, which is a design style you can see here on the mood board with Stranger Things and also the new arch cake trend. Firstly, I'm grabbing my favorite stuff, foam core, and I'm just measuring out the size I want my arch to be. I'm going for seven and a half inch across and then going seven and a half inch above to create an equal square. I find doing an equal square first gives a nice looking arch. On top of the square, mark the center of your seven and a half inch and then grab yourself a metal compass. Place the point in the center and pull your pencil to meet the outer edge of your square. Then draw your semicircle, which I think creates a nice looking arch. Once you have that, you want to grab a nice sharp scalpel and cut it out. Of course, you could just buy ganache plates. There are absolutely tons on the market right now, but I prefer to use good old foam core because it's cheap and I'm also not at the mercy of whatever size I've bought. I can make it however big or small or whatever shape I like every single time. To prep this, I've got some cling film, which I'm just laying over the top and then I'm pulling it tight and taping it on the back with masking tape until all the edges are pulled nice and taut. I'm then going straight in on a working board. I have tons of these acrylic circles because they're great for working on. And this is an eight inch square cake that's just been cut in half to make a rectangle. I'm just adding my filling and stacking up my layers. Here, you're looking at one eight inch square cake. It was cut half lengthways and torted through the center, which means you'll have four layers of cake and three layers of filling. I'm just bringing in the arch guide so you can see how much more cake we're going to need. And I'm going to be placing a platform round about here to make sure all that extra cake above it isn't going to squash that bottom cake. To do this, I've got a rectangle piece of foam core which is smaller than our cake so we have some carving room. And I've cut out a hole in the center so I can place a dowel in to keep it sturdy. I'm just placing a bubble tea straw down the center which will then help to hold the top cake in line. I'm then placing two other straws at either side and cutting them level with our cake. This is what our foam core platform is going to sit on. I'm using ganache as glue, threading down my center board and then covering it all over the top. The cake above is now supported by that board and straws. Then just keep going, stacking and filling until you're pretty much as high as your arch template. I'm then just going to scrape out the excess filling that's bulging from the sides and using my template to start carving off the excess. You actually want to carve off more than the template so that you have a nice gap between the cake and the edge of your board to fill with ganache. Here I'm just working on getting in as much cake as possible and finally supporting the last part of the cake with two straws. I'm then coating the whole thing in a rough layer of ganache which will help stabilize it and keep it standing. Keep checking it against your arch guide to make sure that nothing is sticking out past your shape. I then grabbed another one of my acrylic working boards and I'm just slipping my knife underneath to loosen it to lay it flat. So why didn't I lay it flat in the first place and cut out an arch shape from a cake? That's because I want my layers to have plenty of filling and I personally love to use and eat soft fillings and layering it that way and then standing the arch up will mean all your soft fillings are just going to slip to the bottom of the cake. I just like to build them this way to have as much yummy filling as I can. 
I'm then adding ganache all over the top, covering the whole surface before laying on a sheet of greaseproof paper. I'm then taking another working board and giving it a flip. The point of this is that we are ganaching the front and the back and the sides all at the same time so we don't have to do it separately later. Scrape up the ganache that's seeping from the bottom as we don't want this to set sticking out as it's then going to interfere with our shaped board. Just scrape it up the sides and get it out of the way. Then we're going to do the same on top, adding a layer of ganache to cover the whole thing and then laying on our arch shaped board with the cling film side facing down. Now you can see where I'm going with this, we're just going to fill that gap between the arch and the cake with ganache using your scraper to follow the shape. You'll see me using a variety of different scrapers here, I don't have a preference for one over the other, I'm lazy and I will switch to a clean one once one gets too full of ganache. Once your sides are all ganached, nice and clean, and you've left it to firm up, you can then remove that top board. You might have a few little holes and divots here and there, but they're easily fixed by filling it in with some ganache and then using a scraper to make it all smooth. I've then got my board, which I'm just placing a little bit of ganache to act as a glue, and I've slid the cake to the edge of my working board, cutting off any excess greaseproof paper, so I can then easily tilt the cake and stand it up in the ganache glue. Any glue that seeps out, just quickly take your scraper and pull it into the rest of the cake. Now we can reveal that nice clean back, which again, if you have any tiny holes, just give them a quick scrape. Job done, in one go, standing, and all your filling is now the right way up and isn't sliding to the bottom. I'm just dampening the front and then I'm rolling my paste around the sides. I'm aiming to cover the front and the sides here and I'll do the back separately. But you can choose to do it in three parts if you find it easier. As you can see, I have my fan on in the background because it was quite a hot day and this cake didn't exactly go as planned, which you'll see later on. Here, I'm actually having trouble with my paste failing to smooth it on just due to how hot it was. You want to clean up the bottom edge by squishing it with your smedger down towards the board and trimming it close to the base. Then take your acetate smoothers, which are great for buffing out imperfections, and trim off all the overhang. For your sharp edges, I'm holding one smoother completely still right on that edge, and then I'm using my other smoother to pull the paste towards the static smoother to create a sharp edge. The great thing about these smoothers is that they bend, so they're great for the top of this arch where I'm just buffing the sugar paste towards the one I'm holding still. Once that's done, I'm then just covering the back in one panel using my scalpel to first cut off the bulk and then going in a bit finer. And that's it, your arch completed. Next, I have my greaseproof circle to use as my sunset, and I'm just cutting a bit off the bottom for the flat edge. And then using some more greaseproof paper, cutting it into thin strips using my quilting ruler. I absolutely love my quilting ruler, as I can see through it and measure all sorts with it. Here you can see I'm cutting very thin strips which annoyingly curl back up into the shape of my greaseproof paper roll, but you want quite a few of these. Here I'm just checking where I want my sun to be and I'm sticking it all down around the edges with acupuncture needles. 
The reason I'm using acupuncture needles is because I want to spray this sun in pinks and yellows and airbrush colour won't stick to veg fat. This is major lesson number one. Now I already knew colour wouldn't stick to veg fat, which is why I'm using my pins. So I'm not sure why when it came to these thin strips, I thought it would work any different. I didn't use pins for sticking the strips on as I didn't think it would hold them firm enough when it came to spraying. I thought they would lift due to the air pressure and then the airbrush colour would go underneath them. So instead, I run my finger in treks to stick the strips in a grid pattern. Now this will work absolutely perfectly if the colour you want is white, the same colour as your base sugar paste. If you want to airbrush that grid a different colour, like me who wants hers pink, the airbrush colour isn't going to stick to your veg fat. So here you see I'm spraying on my base colour of purple and I'm going around my sunset and confidently spraying my grid knowing those stripes aren't going to come off. Unfortunately for me, I'm pretty messy and I managed to get treks in some of the squares whilst I was placing the strips on. So I could already see my purple colour not wanting to stick. Here you see as I remove the pins and remove the paper that has no treks on it, we are left with a nice white dry circle which will take your airbrush colour. As we start removing these stripes, you'll see it works absolutely amazingly should you want to keep this white. The problem comes when we want to spray this pink. So here I'm starting off with my sunset in a nice bright yellow and then I'm switching to my pink to create that ombre effect. Hot pink at the bottom and then as I start to go down my grid, I thought I might have gotten away with it. It does cover pretty well, but you'll see how it looks a little later on as it starts to dry. I'm then taking that pink up into the yellow, which very slightly turns it orange in between. Whilst that is drying very badly off camera, I have traced my letters onto some greaseproof paper. As you can see, I have my outline of the sun behind it, so I know what size to make the letters. I just got them from a Stranger Things font generator online, but I'm scoring around the letters with my Dresden tool onto some teal sugar paste, and then following those lines with a scalpel to cut them out. Once you've cut them all out, line them up, and this is where a mat like this comes in handy for sticking them level on that little grid. And I'm using treks on the back of some greaseproof paper to stick my letters to. Now this is fine because my letters are already coloured and I don't plan on airbrushing them. You just want to stick your letters to the paper so that you're able to then turn them over and add water to the back of the letters to stick them to your cake. Hold up the greaseproof paper where you want your letters to go and gently press them into position, peeling away the paper to leave nice even lettering. The same thing with the letters, I've just traced out the Hellfire Skull logo and I'm actually cutting this out of hot pink. Place this towards the top and then paint in all your details. The white is just white dust mixed with water, the yellow is white dust, water and yellow gel and then my black is black metallic paint. I always leave everything linked in the description box below. Because you've already seen me do the toilet method several times, just take a look at that grid pattern instead. Keep your eyes on it and you'll see exactly how this started to dry very patchy colour is running off that fat and I attempted to fix it several times by painting and overspraying but at this point all we can do is hide it with decorations instead. Here I've traced Eddie's guitar and I'm just taping it down to some spare piece of foam core to cut it out with a scalpel. I'm just cutting through the greaseproof paper and slightly into the foam core to leave a guide and then I can remove the paper and continue to cut the guitar out more accurately.
piping gel is better than water for sticking your sugar paste to foam core and I'm just laying over a hot pink to cover the base of the guitar and flipping it over, sticking down the sides and trimming off all the overhang. Now of course Eddie's guitar isn't pink and it also has a pattern on but I was going for the synth wave look which is why the Hellfire logo and the guitar are pink instead of red. You just want to cover the base in pink and the neck in black. And then attaching a blob of black sugar paste to the back of the guitar, dampening it and sticking it into position. And this is where I'm attempting a major cover up of all that disastrous grid pattern. I've cut out bats and I'm using the transfer method like we did with the letters, just sticking them all over the worst parts. Again with the vines, I'm bringing them up onto the grid pattern to hide the patches as best I could. And covering the whole board with teal upside down Vecna vines. You'll also notice I haven't even bothered to decorate the back of the cake. This is just for the challenge, not for a client, and I was just trying to get this done as quickly as I could. What I'm spraying here is actually pink, but when it meets the blue, it turns purple, just to add a bit more depth. This is my white powder, which I'm just adding a few drops of water to to make a paint, and I'm dipping in my cake decorating toothbrush to flick on all those white floaty bits from the upside down. I'm covering the whole of the vines on the board, and don't worry if it flicks up onto the cake because it just adds to the effect. And then just finishing off the guitar with all the little details. Just follow pictures online. At this point I was pretty much done with this cake and I very nearly quit making it. But I persevered and I'm just adding on my guitar strings which are pieces of wire. And you can see they're being stuck on by a little black sausage at the bottom and then they're secured at the top with a ball of black. If I had the patience, I would have loved to have added more of the Hellfire logo either side of the skull. I may have also painted the guitar a bit more, but I was just so disappointed with my grid pattern and how warm it was that day. I just thought this is going to have to be my best work for the day. So your lesson here is even though I already knew that your airbrush colour wasn't going to stick to Trex, maybe stick your grid pattern on with the pins or make them manually with pink strips of paste instead. Do as I say, not as I do. Lucky for you and for me, the next lot of images should cheer you up. These are what the Brigadiers have created using the mood board. And you have to agree, they're all incredibly inventive and fit the board perfectly. Don't forget to vote for your favorite in the comments below. The winner gets a prize and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye guys.